start with Brian Rob. Hey Brad, I uh, just wanted to check in on the Tristan um, news. When did you guys find out that he wouldn't be available today? And if there's any update on Romeo, is there any chance he might be available for you guys later this week, or is that still unknown? Um, uh, I found out maybe early afternoon on Tristan, um, and Romeo's not back. Um, you know, tomorrow or Friday, so. I haven't really asked beyond that. Gary Washburn. Hey, Brad. I know you said earlier today, obviously, you have no interest in the Indiana job, but how tough is that job? I mean, Archie Miller is a good coach, and he's gone. It, it, that job, job has kind of had some, uh, some upheaval and, and some ups and downs. How has the landscape changed in that state since you left, and how tough is that job? When the Big Ten, let alone the nation, is, is treacherous, it's a, you know, it's a lot of tough teams. Listen, every job has its challenges. Every job has its um, great things. I don't really want to act like I know. Um, you know, I know, you know, and I said this today, like, you know, obviously I have a great affinity for that state um, and basketball in that state and that, that place. Um, was a huge part of what drove my passion for basketball. In fact, it was the central thing. And so um, I don't know what challenges each place has because I have, you know, you don't work there, I think. Um, but I know that when you're a kid growing up in that state, basketball means a lot and the college programs in the state mean a ton. And for me growing up, it was certainly IU. Um, but you know, hey, um, I think um, I think Arch is, is a good coach, and he did a really good job of preparing Romeo. I thought when Romeo came in, you could tell he was advanced in a lot of ways. And I've known Arch for a while. I don't, you know, I haven't talked to him much, but um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I, th I think in coaching, you know, you're always you're always recognize how how hard it is to be good, how hard it is to win, and. Um, that said, on a, on a more positive note, I'd rather talk about Micah, to be honest. So we're thrilled. Like, the, I think the whole Celtics organization and, um, you know, my family, I, I said this on Randy's interview just now, like, for us, the Shrewsbury's are <clears throat> not, not friends, they're family. And so for him to get the opportunity to go to Penn State, be named the head coach of Penn State, um, I had a huge bag of gear arrive at my house because we ordered it right when we found out um i could not be more thrilled for him um couldn't be a more deserving person and a guy that i think will be incredible um now that he has his own opportunity and so um i'd rather talk about that gary mark d'amico and coach to follow up on that why do you think that he is going to be successful in this role why is he ready for this well, I mean, first of all, you've been around and Mark, I said, I said in my little quote that they asked the greatest compliment you can give somebody in a, on a sports team is they made everyone around them better. And I, I used to play with Micah in open gyms traveling across the city of Indianapolis when we were 16, 17 years old, when we didn't hardly know each other. And, you know, it was obvious then that he was a guy you wanted to play with he knew how to play and he'd get everybody the ball and he made his team better and I played against him in college and it was the same thing then I worked with him at Butler it was the same thing then you know we both had young families together and you know you're always there he's all they're always there for us and spending six years with him here like he's as good as it gets he's got great perspective he's a great basketball coach um, obviously I think going back to Purdue was a great move for him because it got him back into the mindset and of recruiting and um you know matt let him call the plays and run the offense at purdue which is tells you a lot about matt painter and the way that he approaches things and so i'm happy for him i'm really happy for him adam himmelsbach Brad, just back to the indiana thing one more second i'm sure you love talking about this with us but what i don't what is i'm sure you've seen this kind of groundswell of support for you there and obviously that place 
means a lot to you. What does that mean? And, and does it put you in almost an uncomfortable position when you are here? Yeah, in, of course. Of course. It, it means, it means a lot. It means a lot, but you know, I, I know that, um, listen, I've got a lot of friends back there. I've got a lot of people that, um, you know, are really important to me there. Um, my dad's still there. Like, so, um, you know, that, that does mean a lot. I can't, I, I, I won't act like that doesn't, but it's like I said earlier today, it's, a, it's flattering. Um, but I also realize that I'm the coach of the Celtics and, um, you know, that's, um, it's been an amazing opportunity an amazing challenge every day for the last eight years. And, you know, I'm extremely grateful for that. Dan Roche. Hi, Brad. Uh, two questions. One is how rewarding is it as a coach to see someone like Mike go on and get a job like that? I mean, it's gotta be nice in that coaching circle and you're, you're with them every day and share the ups and downs and to see someone rewarded for his hard work. How nice is that? And then just to follow up to, to a guy like Tristan, do you now treat this with these protocols almost like a, you're finding out a day of game injury and, and you kind of move on quickly and, and go about your business? Um, well, first of all, it's, it's incredibly, it's just gratifying to know that good things happen to good people with Micah. And, and you know, I, again, I could talk all day about that. And so, um, I, you know, I can't say enough good things. Uh, with Tristan, I, I think we've tried our best, Dan, to tell our team from the get-go, we've got to hit curveballs. Um, this is going to be constant. Um, as a staff, we, you know, when we wake up every morning, we don't know what's going to happen with regard to who's available. I mean, you never know in an NBA season. I mean, shoot, anything can happen. Guys got the flu in the past, whatever the case may be. Um, obviously, been a lot less of that because of all the mask wearing. Um, but uh, But I do think like you're always on your toes and, you know, I, I always expect someone's not going to be available. Final question, John Corrales. Right. When it comes to the COVID testing, um, <clears throat> the after, after a player like Tatum uh, returns, and I know they have the heart testing yeah. when he returns, is that something that continues to make sure that there isn't an occurrence or do you know if that just the heart testing is just to clear him to play? I don't know all the tests they go through. I know that um, it is uh, mandated by the teams in the NBA and the NBA PA, I'm sure. Um, and they all work together to make sure that nobody's cleared until they feel very comfortable with that. Um, obviously, as a coach, you know, my, my number one thing is always, have we, have we passed those tests? Have we cleared that? Because you never want to put somebody out on the floor that you're concerned about in that way. I don't know what all goes into getting that okay. I know that there's a couple of days usually towards the end. Um, and so, um, but it's, it's scary stuff. And, you know, I think that the reality is, is that with the vaccine numbers going up and, and you know, people um, seeing good weather in certain places of the country. I mean, we were just in Houston last week. It's nothing like Massachusetts, nothing. And, you know, I don't think that, you know, I think that we just all have to continue to be very mindful um, because this has been brutal. We'll wrap it up right there. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm.